So what else can we do with app formulas? Now, before we move on to user-defined functions and also user-defined types, we should go into the project settings. So I'm going to turn on the new analysis engine, which is required for user-defined functions and types. And it's warning me that we'll have to do a full page refresh, which is no problem. Now I'm going to type in user, click on experimental, and turn on user-defined functions and user-defined types. I'll click close. I'll click save. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit the refresh button in the browser. Okay, we're all refreshed now. I'm going to go back into app formulas. So, so far the syntax, and the word syntax means rules of a particular language like PowerFX. Now the syntax for user-defined functions is a little different. I'm going to share the code here. So this is the syntax of name formulas. Here were some examples. User-defined functions, of course, we need to turn on those, those settings there. Now this is the syntax for creating user-defined functions. All right, so I'm going to paste this code over here. Now let's create a function. Now, have you ever written an application where the users, the stakeholders, the requirements have specified that all dates have to be in a certain format? And we could use the text function to format a date, but we might have that all over the place. One of the great upsides to having user-defined formulas is that we can define something once and just refer to it. And if it ever needs to be changed, you only have to change it in one place. So I'm going to create a function called fx. I'm going to create a function called fx date format. And I only want to pass in one parameter. And the parameter is going to be called date to format. Now, when you're defining these, if you hit colon, you're going to get a drop down with all the types that you have to pick from. You'll use a colon here and you'll find all the types that you can use. Now, I'll accept in a date time, even though we have a date, I want it to be flexible. Now, the return type of my function won't be a date, date time. Now, the return type of my user defined function won't be a date, won't be a date time. It will be text because, because it's going to be formatted in a certain way. So let's use the text function. Now the text function, thankfully, is a declarative function and it allows us to format values into a specific format of a string. So I'm going to take this date to format and this is almost like a variable at this point. Once you define an argument, here we go, date to format. What's the format that we want? Let's make it really different. We'll have the day, two digit day. We'll put a dash in there. And if I want the month abbreviation, I put three M's. And then for year, I want the full four digit year. And that's it. Now the month, for example, November, would probably return capital N lowercase ov. Well, let's say we want that to be uppercase. Well, let's see what we can do here. Let's use the upper function, which again is declarative. So with numbers, dashes, and spaces, upper isn't going to do anything, but when it comes to alpha characters like NOV, it's going to make them uppercase. All right, so now that we have this user-defined function, let's use it in a label here. Bring over a text label. And let's make it a bit bigger. Okay, so here is the name of our function. Now we need to pass into it a date. So we'll say today. Oh, look at that. Why is that a big deal that we can do that with a user defined function? Because everything that's over in that definition, let's go back over to app formulas, the upper, the text, all this would have to be repeated all over the place where you needed to show this date format. And if you can imagine having a gallery, you know, it may not always need to be today. It could be a created uh, date time for a record and you might need to display it in this format. So it's very nice having this new feature within Power Apps. One other thing that I'll show you is that if you go over here to the side and click on variables, look at this. We have our name formulas here. Now I don't see user defined functions, but I'm hoping eventually they will add that to this pane. Notice that we could go in here and say, oh, a new name to formula. What is that gonna do for us? 
really nothing. It's going to select the app object and go to formulas for us. So it's a, a shortcut to get there. Now, whenever you're creating a user defined function, notice here we defined a type, the type of value that's passed in here. After the colon, we've defined a type, which is the return value type that the function is going to return. So if I were to take that out and just put that colon back in, these are all the types that we have to pick from. Now, here in the last few days, they've released this new feature of user defined types. So now you'll start to see other things. I don't quite understand why they have the sample arrays or collections here. They're there if you want to use them. But for a long time, we've only had number, text, date, quid, all these different types. Now, something I have noticed is now that the feature has been out for two or three days, I now notice when I pull in data sources on the data tab, they appear here. Okay, so that's nice. So I could have a user defined function that returns a, a table or a record type. Now I'm going to hit control Z and get that text back. Yeah. So here on the screen, you'll notice these are the types that we've had. Okay. So let's talk more about the user defined types. This is the syntax for creating a type. You give it a name and then you've got a colon with an equal sign with the type function. And between cur two curly braces, you can name off everything that you want to have in there. Okay, so we've got um, a person type. Also, look, address. We have address line one, address line two, city, state, zip. So I'm going to copy this and paste it in our app formulas. Now, something that you might realize is that when you create types, these almost look like a database table definition. It's like you're creating a schema and that's somewhat true, but there are times when you want to create a type that doesn't quite match the database schema. Perhaps you want to pull in data from three different tables and create a single type that would have all of the columns that you're interested in having. So I'm going to show you an example of this, but at this point realize this is the syntax using this type function. Notice we've got the curly braces in there. Now here is a very powerful way that you can use these user defined types. You see for the first last name and date of birth, we have types right here. We could actually use another type that we've defined inside of another type. So you can nest them. So I'll say address of type fx address so if we had a person we could say fx person dot first last name but when we get to address we we could type address dot and get at all of these other fields now something that is vitally important to point out here a person is set up is defined as a type of a single record as you can see here these curly braces what if you want to return a collection of people and not just one record? Okay, let's see how we can do this. We probably want to call this FX people and we'll use the colon equal. We'll use the type. We'll put a semicolon at the end. And inside of this type, this is going to be a collection of that FX person. How do you create a collection with square brackets? And now I'm going to say FX person. So now I've defined a type that is essentially a collection of another type. All right, let's take this a step further. Now, if I go over here to my data tab, I do have app users. So we have fields in there like name, email address, date of birth. And then we have another table over here called address that has fields like address line one, address line two, city, state, zip. Okay. So I wanted to show you these data sources because we're going to put these things together. All right. Going back over to at formulas. So what I want to do here is combine a lot of the concepts that we've gone over so far. FX get users 
from state. So this will be a user defined function. And whenever somebody uses this function, I want them to pass in the name or an abbreviation of a state. So I'll call it filter state and its type will be text. And then I want to return a collection of people. There we go. Now, what am I going to do at this point? Well, obviously we want to do a filter on the app user table where the state is the filter state that was passed into this function. Now we do need a semicolon to end the definition of this user defined function. So this database table has more information than just first, last name, date of birth. So what I want to do is return only the fields that have been defined in that type. So let's use a function here called show columns. Show columns is going to take a table or a collection like this, and we're going to list off the columns that we want to work with, omitting all the ones that we did not list. So we definitely want first name, last name, date of birth. I'm going to indent this over. Now we're actually missing one of the fields here for address, as you can see there. So we have another function called add columns. Add columns takes a table or a collection like this, and it's going to allow us to add another column. So we're going to name this address. And if we scroll up here, that's exactly what we called it, just address. So we need to have all these columns and they need to be named the same thing as we've defined them in the user defined type. But the address has more than one piece of information, doesn't it? And it's going to have those fields. So let's go do a lookup on the address table. And we only want the specific record that lines up for this user, the app user. So I'm going to say this record dot ID. And in the address table, we do have a user ID that we need to match it up with. Now a SharePoint list has got a bunch of other columns besides just the ones that we've created. So we could use this show columns with this lookup to only include the columns that we list. Okay. So that would be address line one, address line two, city, state, zip. All right, so let's scroll up to our address definition. Address line one, two, city, state, zip. Now I'm going to select all of this and indent it over one. So I purposely wanted to give you guys a little bit more of an advanced example of how this could be used. We're essentially doing a join here. We're pulling in or joining two sets of data, matching them up and returning them from our user defined function. Now, how would we use user defined types apart from data, our database tables? Well, there's actually all kinds of different ways that you could use this. Let me give you two or three examples. Have you ever created your own menu and you had menu items that you needed to pass in to your menu control? Well, if I click on menu items here, I have a collection. And this was all created in the app on start. Now we could go into app formulas and define all of the fields. We could define the schema that we want to define for our menu items. Let me give you an, another example. Now I'm going to go into settings and I want to make sure I'm going to go into settings here and I want to turn on modern controls and themes. And you guys are probably already familiar with the themes. And if we were to create our own theme, What's all the information that's defined about a theme? Let's say we create our own theme and we like this color blue. We give it a name like Darren's favorite. So we have a color or set of colors. You see this generated palette. And if you want it to use that exact hexadecimal for the primary color, you got to turn this option on. You have this color. That's based on these values that you input. And then you have a whole color palette based on that color. Then you've got a theme name and you've got a font and I'm going to click create. Now, if I bring over 
a rectangle and we try to change the color of this rectangle, we can tap into these themes or the theme that is set up for this application by going into app dot theme dot look at this we have colors we have a font and a name now the font and the name are simple types they're just a string or text but the colors have a lot more defined for that particular type now if we were going to create something like this you could very well do that now that we have user defined types. We're going to go back over to app formulas and we'll go to the bottom here and we could create our own theme definition. So FX theme, we've got the colon equal sign. We'll use the type. We'll put in the semicolon. We need curly braces. Now to replicate what they have, we'll put in font and that is going to be text. We've got name which will be text as well. But the colors will have to be something else entirely. We need to define a new type. Now, all those different colors, what does that look like? Well, I'm going to paste it in here. And once you see it, it's going to make sense. Okay. And this would have taken me a long time to type all this in. But you see, it's the exact same syntax. We're defining colors or a listing, like a whole color palette. Now, what I like about defining our own theme and our own color palettes like this as user defined types is that you could extend. So if we wanted to duplicate the feature set that's already there with modern themes, we can do it by defining it this way. Now we can use this type here. Now I do need a comma there. Very good. And we've duplicated that, but we could add on additional fields for either of these. Now, one really good example of something you might want to add to this is for each theme, have a color palette for if the user wanted a light theme or a dark theme. Let me show you an example of this. Over here on my website, powerplatformlinks.com, you'll notice over here, you can see it in dark mode or light mode. Perhaps you want to implement the same type of feature in your Power Apps applications. That would be a great way of defining different color palettes based on a light or dark mode. So hopefully you guys can see how powerful and how exciting this new feature is. I'd love to hear from you guys and find out all the cool ways that you're able to implement this in your applications.